ਕਨੈਕਟ ਐਫਐਮ 91.5 ਤੇ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਸੁਣ ਰਹੇ ਹੋ ਸਵੇਰ ਵਾਲਾ ਸ਼ੋਅ ਤੇ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਹੁਣ ਸਾਡੇ ਨਾਲ ਸ਼ਾਮਲ ਹੋ ਰਹੇ ਹਨ ਰਾਈਟਰ ਇੰਡੀਪੈਂਡੈਂਟ ਜਰਨਲਿਸਟ ਅਜੇ ਕਮਲਾ ਕਰਨ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਬਾਰੇ ਮੈਂ ਬ੍ਰੇਕ ਤੋਂ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਨਾਲ ਗੱਲਬਾਤ ਸਾਂਝੀ ਕਰ ਰਿਹਾ ਸੀ ਕਿ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਇੱਕ ਆਰਟੀਕਲ ਲਿਖਿਆ scroll.in ਤੇ ਜਿਸ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਕਿ ਸਿੱਖ ਭਾਈਚਾਰਾ ਈਰਾਨ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਤੇ ਈਰਾਨ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਇੱਕ ਬਾਰਡਰ ਤੇ ਇੱਕ ਟਾਊਨ ਹੈ ਜ਼ਹਿਦਾਨ ਉਹਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਹਲੇ ਵੀ ਮੁੱਠੀ ਭਰ ਕੁਝ ਸਿੱਖ ਫੈਮਿਲੀਆਂ ਨੇ ਜਿਹੜੀਆਂ ਉੱਥੇ ਰਹਿੰਦੀਆਂ ਨੇ ਸੋ ਇਸ ਗੱਲਬਾਤ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਇਸ ਵੇਲੇ ਅਜੇ ਜੀ ਸਾਡੇ ਨਾਲ ਮੁੰਬਈ ਤੋਂ ਸ਼ਾਮਲ ਹੋ ਰਹੇ ਨੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਸਵਾਗਤ ਕਰਦੇ ਆ ਹੈਲੋ ਅਜੇ ਜੀ ਕੈਨ ਯੂ ਹੇਅਰ ਮੀ ਯੈਸ ਆਈ ਐਮ ਹੀਅਰ ਓ ਪਰਫੈਕਟ ਆਈ ਕੈਨ ਹੀਅਰ ਯੂ ਲਾਊਡ ਐਂਡ ਕਲੀਅਰ ਹਾਊ ਯੂ ਡੂਇੰਗ ਆਮ ਡੂਇੰਗ ਪ੍ਰੀਟੀ ਵੈਲ ਹਾਊ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਯੂ ਆਮ ਡੂਇੰਗ ਰੀਲੀ ਵੈਲ ਸੋ ਟੈਲ ਅਸ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਦੀ ਦੀ ਇੰਟਰਸਟਿੰਗ ਸਟੋਰੀ ਆਫ ਦ ਸਿੱਖ ਫੈਮਿਲੀਜ਼ ਇਨ ਜ਼ਹਿਦਾਨ ਵਿਚ ਇਜ਼ ਅ ਵਿਚ ਇਜ਼ ਅ ਟਾਊਨ ਬਾਰਡਰਿੰਗ between between balochistan and uh, iran on the other side right so this place zahidan actually gets his name from uh, the sikh community that uh, is very small in number there at this moment but uh, i can, if you go back to history the original name of the town is dosdab mm-hmm. and uh, there are different meanings for that so uh, in baloch it means uh, outpouring of water and in farsi it can mean water thieves so what happened was in uh, the 1920s when um, the Shah well the man who became the Shah later mm-hmm. uh, visited uh, the town he saw uh, Indian men there uh, in white robes and with flowing beards and turbans and he asked the locals who were they and they said that um, these are zahids holy mm-hmm. men from hind so then the name was changed to zahidan and that's how the place got and, its uh, name yeah that's how it got the name zahidan So, and the uh, how you how did you stumble upon this information it's a very interesting story you know it was just by chance that you found out that there is uh, some sikh population living in that area how did you find out about that tell us about that well a friend of mine visited me from germany a few years ago this is before the pandemic and he took the land route from uh, turkey into iran into pakistan and india so uh, zahidan which is just about uh, 41 kilometers from the Pakistan border was a stop uh, before coming into Pakistan and uh, he went to get an Indian visa <laughs> this is somebody who uh, did not take a visa beforehand mm-hmm. so there he tried to get an Indian visa there at the Indian consulate in Zahidan and uh, there the diplomats told him about this uh, gurudwara mm-hmm. and he visited the gurudwara and had langar there and met some of the sikh families so the idea to write this article was in the back of my mind and then uh, i won a fellowship uh, to write about history and heritage mm-hmm. so this year so then uh, did some research and got in touch with people and uh, got, in fact i actually had a chance to speak to some sikhs who live there right now oh nice and what what is life there like for those sikh families and uh, and uh, in your article you mention it's only a handful of the families left in zahidan now but how's life like for them well see they seem to be secure financially and living a fairly comfortable life but with each generation i think the the community is dwindling to such an extent mm-hmm. that uh, they may not continue to exist in zahidan because one of their main concerns is the quality of the schools there mm-hmm. but there's one school attached to the gurudwara but it just has uh, th- you know three classrooms and uh, they're not satisfied with this and a lot of the younger people want to live in western countries so this is something that uh, unfortunately the community uh, may not exist after a few decades mhm when the uh, when the revolution took place in 1979 the iranian revolution there were a lot of indians back then and a lot of them had to leave because of the revolution so is the um, the the social setup and the the religious ideology in the country a threat in any in any way for the sikhs living in zahidan at all or are they just living and practicing their religion comfortably and freely well they're practicing the religion comfortably and freely and they're not seen as a threat to the iranian establishment because they're so few in number and there's also a, a sikh community in tehran which at one time numbered 5000 mm-hmm. but what happens is uh, if the one concern that the families have is when their daughters want to get married if mm-hmm. you know they only want them to marry sikhs because if you marry um 
a Muslim there, they may be forced to convert or, uh, you know, under their laws. Mm -hmm. That's one problem that seems to concern them. But they don't face discrimination of any kind. In 79, they were caught in a crossfire between the Sistanis and the Baluchis, the two ethnic groups who were mm -hmm. divided uh, on the wrong side of the Shia Sunni divide. Mm -hmm. And at that time, both communities offered to protect the Sikhs. Uh, because they were the people who uh, controlled a lot of the businesses in Zahidan oh. and were supplying food and they ran uh, auto part shops and the only alcohol shops at mm -hmm. that time in Zahidan. So there were six of them and all of them were run by Sikh families. Of course, they're all closed down now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what kind of occupations the remaining families in Zahidan uh, are engaged in now? Well, they uh, they have grocery stores, they are still into auto parts, and uh, a couple of the families are entrusted with looking after the Gurudwara there. Oh, wow. You study the Indian diaspora living in various parts of the world. How fascinating was this discovery for you? Or have you come across, have you stumbled across uh, things uh, or people of Indian origin living in places which are even more far-fetched? Well, I did personally meet some Sikh people in a Burmese town uh, called Maimyo in uh, 2002. Mm -hmm. And uh, these are people who traveled with the British again. But uh, I mean, I, I really did not expect until my friend told me about this community that there would be uh, such a, you know, like a stronghold of Sikhs in Iran and this town particularly. Uh, it's more fascinating because it was an entry point. Mm -hmm. One thing that we all forget now in 2021 is that British India had a border with Iran. So India and right. Iran have been neighbors uh, for hundreds of years before uh, the partition of the subcontinent. Right, right, right. So, this is this is so fascinating. So people there, uh, uh, I've actually uh, have a listener sending in a question. They say, what language do they speak, if you happen to know? Like, do, do they speak the local language there, or are they still able to maintain the mother tongue Punjabi? Well, they speak Punjabi, but what is something that I've noticed about Sikhs in different parts of the world is that they pick up local languages really fast. They make it a priority to learn them. So the Sikhs who live in Zahidan, not only do they speak Punjabi and Farsi, but they also, uh, many of them are fluent in the Baloch language. They can speak Baluchi. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But now the younger generation is the generation that actually wants to migrate away and, and come to the Western countries. Uh, you know, when we were having a conversation off air, you also uh, mentioned a very interesting fact uh, about the Kendriya Vidyalyas. That, uh, if you could just share that with our listeners as well. Right. Well, there's a CBSE school, uh, that's the Central Board of Secondary Education, Kendriya Vidyalaya Central School in Tehran. But its origin is actually Zahidan because that was where uh, the Sikh community converged uh, before many of them set out and moved to Tehran for better economic opportunities. So the school was actually shifted there to Tehran. And uh, Tehran is one of the three cities outside India that hosts the Kendriya Vidyalaya, along with Kathmandu and Moscow. Oh, and... Any estimates about the Indian population or the Sikh population in Tehran? From what I heard, uh, there must be uh, under a thousand at the moment mm -hmm. because they at their peak, it was 5000. But many people moved out simply because they feared what would happen after 1979. Right. And also the big problem that they faced uh, being citizens of Iran, uh, they their sons were forced uh, to fight in the Iran-Iraq war. Mm. There was conscription. Conscription still exists in Iran. So even though Sikhism is not officially recognized as a religion in Iran, the Sikhs are full-fledged citizens, and their sons have to uh, to serve in the army, uh, from, you know, from period ranging up to thirty-six months. Up to 36 months, they have to serve in the army, in the Iranian army. Right. And Yes, and there have been cases of some people who were born there <laughs> trying to get fake birth certificates from India and claiming that they're actually mm -hmm. Indians. Mm -hmm. And uh, there have been stories of India helping such people, but uh, none of this is official. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, for a lot of our listeners, the name of the town Zahidan is they've probably heard it for the first time. Uh, I read it for the first time when I read your article. Is it a vibrant 
uh, town, a modern city. Uh, what 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 is Zahedan like? If you can share that with us. Well, it is actually now a pretty modern city, but uh, you have to understand it was a small village which became extremely important around the time of the First World War, when the First World War was uh, at its uh, peak because there were German and Turkish agents who had penetrated into Persia, into Iran. And there was all sorts of uh, rumors that uh, uh, they may attack British India from there. Mm -hmm. So what happened was this, the settlement of the Sikhs in Zahidan actually spurred the economy. And then more people moved in from different parts of uh, eastern Iran to that city. So it's uh, quite a vibrant city now. Oh, that's uh, And it's important enough for India to maintain a consulate there. Oh, Indian consulate is in Zahidan. Very much. And in fact, many of the people who use the Gurudwara are uh, employees of the consulate. I think the consul general is also a Sikh in uh, Zahedan. Oh, well, Ajay, uh, this is such a fascinating uh, piece of information. And I would actually like to encourage our listeners to read the whole article that you've written. Uh, on. It's on scroll.in, I believe, right? That's right. Thank you so much for your time, and I look forward to having more conversations with you in the future about all these Thank you, Vijay discoveries I'd that like you made. Thank you, I'd like to say hi to my sister, Deepti Rajiv, who's in Coquitlam. She's been listening to your program, so big hello to her from me. Oh, she's in Coquitlam. Oh, wow, small world. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. And thank you. It was a pleasure being on your program. Likewise. Thank you so much. Good to chat with you.